Hello, and welcome back to a brand new episode of Survivor Social, the Survivor podcast where we discuss Survivor with a focus on the social elements of the game. Here to talk about episode several. My name is Tegwith, and we have a great episode for you guys today. As always, my incredible co host, Kara, is here today. Kara, how are you? Hi, I'm good. So excited to talk about episode several. Can't wait. <laughs> It's going to be incredible, and we have an amazing guest with us today, the absolute icon from 44, Lauren Harp. Lauren, how are you? Hello. I am doing really, really well. Super excited. This is an awesome episode, so I'm ready to get in and talk about all of the things. <laughs> so many things, double elimination, a lot of drama, blind sides. Um, before we get into it, Lauren, I always want to ask our guests, how do you, how are you feeling about 46 so far? Obviously, we're about halfway through, almost done. How are you feeling? You know what? I, I dare to say this may be, for me at least, is my opinion, one of the better seasons of the new era. And you know what? Oh, I see some raised eyebrows. <laughs> it could be because of like, like um, the longer episodes, but even like the players, I feel like are more, I guess I would say loud. They're vocal. They're a little bit more aggressive. You can see a little bit more, like they're not afraid um, to say how they feel, I guess. And I, I respect that, you know, like that was the game I played, but I respect it. And I like watching it as a viewer. So it, it's been good. I, I absolutely agree. Um, but before we dig into the episode, as always, if you're watching live or listening on Spotify, make sure to like and subscribe to Survivor Now on both YouTube and Spotify. And as a reminder, we are live right now. So uh, if you have any questions, please post them in the comments. If you have, if you agree with us, disagree with us, let us know in the comments. We love, we love to hear you guys' voices. Uh, so definitely um, keep chatting with us throughout the episode, but let's dig in to the episode. Um, I want to first start off by talking about the merged tribe name. Obviously, this is actually the first official merge episode that we've got, right? We've got Mergatory, uh, the episode before. This ep this tribe name is Nui Nui. Um, how are we feeling about this? I know, Lauren, your merge <laughs> tribe was Va Va, so we've got this like double Fijian right. word or something going on. How do you feel about Nui Nui? Right. Okay. So I've looked it up, but I didn't find anything. Have y'all, do y'all know what that means or have I you looked heard it up anything? Oh. I have no idea. <laughs> if I genuinely no idea. I looked it up. I, I tried to look it up on like socials. Nothing. <laughs> no clue. Yeah. Yeah. No clue. I, I, I was too late to ask like one of the, the cast, um, people on the cast, but they didn't answer me just yet. But I mean, like, it's interesting. Uh, ours, Vava, it came from a uh, Jam Jam. So like his name was the double, you know, and that meant four, four. So it was kind of play on that. But I'm I'm really interested to know what that means. You know, what's the meaning behind it? Did it have a meaning? Was it just something they came up with? I don't know. Mm -hmm. What do y'all think? I was almost like, is it the number? <laughs> but it's not. You know, Va means four in Fijian because that's what Vava was four, four, right? Right, right. So no, I have no, no idea. Kara, do you have any idea what this could be? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe someone watching will know and they can like put it in the comments and let us know. Yeah, let us, <laughs> Maybe let someone us know. figured it out. Yeah. <laughs> now let's get into the actual like strategy of the episode. I will start off by saying a lot of strategy. I feel like we saw this episode. We were mm -hmm. only like eight to 10 minutes into the episode when we got to the challenge. I feel like that's rare nowadays where we start off so quickly with the challenge. Um, how did you like, Lauren, I'll start with you. How did you like having um, this like separate, you know, two tribe kind of, two, not tribe, but the, the split where all we really got today was, or, or this episode was content of strategy. Did you like that? Yay, nay? The split as in, as in for the whole episode or for like the, yeah, the going into the challenge? Okay. Um, I I think you can kind of see the dynamics with different players, but but then also like when within the split, it was still players that still kind of work together. You know, I, I think I would have liked to see more of just like different players, maybe a different dynamic. And um, I know like in order to get the split, it was a rock draw, right? Um, which I'm not just a big fan of, you know, I'm not a, as, as a viewer, I'm not, but as a player, I might be, um, cause you know, they have the schoolyard pick and I'm, I'm small, you know, so people may not pick me or whatever. And, but it's more interesting to watch, you know, 
Um, and maybe we could have seen a little bit of a different dynamic. But yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I wish I just would have liked to see different players interact with each other. I get that. Kara, yeah. how did you feel about the split? I agree. I feel like it wasn't like it wasn't random enough, <laughs> if that's yeah. like possible. Because yeah. it's still like you still had so many of the same original tribe members on the two swap tribes. So I feel like if I agree, like if it was more split up and different people getting to interact, I think it would have been better. But I also didn't mind it. I didn't mind the split and having that in this episode. Yeah, I well, I think it stinks that like somebody didn't make the jury like last season, you know, I think that yeah. stinks. But my my big question to Survivor is why are we doing all of this stuff? We're calling it the merge when we could have just swapped tribes. I think I said this last episode too. Yeah. You know, yeah. if we had a, a swap tribe, um, maybe, you know, the episode before mergatory, you know, we would have had three episodes with these, you know, new swapped tribes, seeing how these mm -hmm. different people interact. Maybe people would have won, maybe people would people wouldn't have, and then we would have gotten to the actual merge and had it not be a mergatory. And I just am curious as to why, like why production makes that call when essentially we're just swapping all over the place. We're swapping all the time, even though it's really right. a merge. Um, and I'm just like mm -hmm. curious as to why production does that. I, I honestly don't know if I feel yay or nay about it. I, I feel, I don't love mergatory, but you know, it is what it is. I just am curious as to like, I wish I could get into production's brain and be like, why, why don't you just swap? Would you prefer to see a right. swap or do you think it would have been, you know, this is, this is better, Lauren? I would love to see a swap um, because I guess, I guess maybe from production, like you get that short little amount of time with them together. You can see that dynamic because the game, I guess, is shorter now, 26 days. So maybe they don't have enough time to do a total swap, you know, but I would like to see a swap just as, so you can see them um, interacting longer and maybe even with the hour and a half, you can still kind of see that, you know, like you don't need that long to be with them. You just need like a few days and then you can truly form some bonds with, with one another there in just that day and a half or two days or whatever, you know? So I think maybe in the future, like if we can see some swaps, that would be pretty cool. I would yeah. love it. Kara, are you, are you a fan of a swap? I agree. I, I think a swap would have been good, especially with Yanu losing so much. I feel like a swap mm -hmm. would have been perfect. So. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, let's go to the start of the episode. We go back right at the beginning um, when or right after tribal Kara or not Kara. <laughs> that's you, Kara. <laughs> Venus. <laughs> you no. Um, uh, what are you Venus. trying to say? <laughs> just Kara on 48. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Venus saw her name down and she only saw it once but she did not like mm -hmm. it and immediately she said soda it's got to be soda and there was already this you know confrontation between venus and soda uh is this the most conflict that we've seen between two players in the new era because i kind of feel like it is kara do you think that you know this is a a, a lot of conflict it, yeah i it is kind of funny how like they keep like butting heads and it kind of like Reminds me of how, like, last season, Katora and Bruce uh -huh. kind of had their thing. And now this season, Venus and Soda have their thing. It's entertaining to watch, so. <laughs> it's entertaining, but I feel, feel like this one has a little bit more substance. Like, yeah, like, they actually I, mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, like, Venus, you know, she gets a lot of confessional. She's, she's giving her input. She's talking a lot. She's being a little bit more aggressive. But then it also made me wonder, like, does she – did she just perceive herself as a threat? And that's why like she thought, you know, Soda voted for her or like, did she even think that like, cause she kept saying that so Soda was social, right? But if Soda was so social, why would she be out of the vote? You know, like, or why wouldn't she like vote with the crowd? You know, like, mm -hmm. why would she be the one to put her name? So I don't know. I wish I would have heard a little bit more about that. Like, why she thought it was soda a little bit more maybe just other than like she just didn't like her but <laughs> there was no strategy behind it like yeah she's like, she doesn't like me so she didn't she voted for me <laughs> literally i think that's such a great point lauren that i haven't even thought of of course yeah soda so 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 try to say that five times fast soda is <laughs> um and 
and that is, I think, you know, if Venus stepped back and thought about it, you're right. If you think that she's such a big threat uh, uh, because of her social game, do you think that she would really be the one person out on the vote? That is, I think, a very, very uh, good point. And, you know, I think mm -hmm. that just shows how maybe emotional Venus is, even if she doesn't want to admit mm -hmm. it, how emotional Venus is being in the moment because she's saying, you know, uh, even though maybe if she thought about it a little bit more, she would have realized, oh, that doesn't really make a ton of sense. But it's just a, an emotional response. We've been butting heads for so long. It has to be this person. It can't be this other person that right. I just met. Right. And it's a right. Really, really good point. Well, and then here we go. Charlie admits that it was Tim. I'm kind of out of the blue, too. Yeah. Which was really <laughs> weird. Would you ever admit why to something he did that? out of the blue? I feel like I wouldn't. If you're not going to get caught, you know, like, I mean, Q was right. You know, like he shouldn't have, he shouldn't have said anything and just let the tension be there and then just like see what happens, you know, because no one would have ever known, you know, I don't think anybody would have ever found out. No. Yeah. It's giving, it could have been, so. been like a T-Bird and Lex thing from, uh, from, uh, I think it was T-Bird and Lex from Africa where, you know, Lex really thought T or somebody else wrote down his name, but it ended up being T Bird. And then, you know, it ended up working in T Bird's favor for the long haul. Mm -hmm. So I wonder what Charlie was thinking in the moment. Quick little side note Sawyer says, Love Lauren, send in love. Aww. Thank you, Sawyer. So happy to have you here. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just think, let me just talk about also, we're getting a coach Q back this episode Girl. Karen, mm -hmm. i know right? <laughs> <laughs> he keeps saying he, 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 he said it to tim he was like are you playing the sega game or the q game does q mm -hmm. think that everyone is there to play the q game because i think that they're all there to play their own game what do you i mean he's very mm -hmm. confident he, he wants them all to play his game <laughs> yeah it's so crazy because i mean i may be jumping a little bit ahead of myself um, but just like even when they were at the challenge and he was playing the alphabet game, he was like, no, 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 that's not how you play. That's not how you play. <laughs> no, that is how you play. You're the only one playing like that, Q. You're the only one. And you're trying to make up the rules. Like, uh-uh, this is a fun time. Not, we're not <laughs> strategizing right now. <laughs> so he, I Truly, guess he does want to be touched too. It Coach Q all the way. I will say that Alphabet game. Did anybody think that Charlie was trolling Q at the end when finally yeah. they were like, yeah. like, all right, uh, Charlotte or whatever he said, and then Q gets all mad. That was definitely <laughs> that was so mad. funny. <laughs> so mad. That is so annoying though. Like hearing being out there and hearing Jeff talk over <laughs> and over and like asking you questions is just it's not annoying. I know that's his job, right? I mean, it is annoying, but it's his job, right? And he's doing it and you're trying to focus. And I can remember one time I was in the water and I was like, Jeff, I can't answer you because you're just throwing me off. But if Q would have been, if I would have been out there with Q, I would have been upset <laughs> with him just talking like, shut up. And then the shout out, uh-uh, <laughs> I'll be quiet. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Tim was shouting out cool his family. He was shouting out everyone on Sega's family or everyone on Sega mm -hmm. and they're like their family. He was saying Maria's kids. Yeah. He was saying Charlie's dad. He was saying Ben's family. Like mm -hmm. that to me is also, I mean, if Tim had not gone out, I wanted to talk about how that I kind of think shows that he's a pretty good social player. You know, right. obviously all right. you to people all the time when you're out there but like remembering not everyone i mean famously back in old school survivor there would be you know quizzes on who know who knew other people best and people didn't know basic yeah. things about people uh tim really knew these people and knew everyone's name to just like shout it out like that good social game yeah. on tim, which i don't think that we were shown much really yeah. mm -hmm. he knew their names he knew where they were from he knew a lot and you've got to be in some deep conversation and really trying to get to know people to get that out of everybody, you know? Yeah. So good, good job on his part. And I mean, maybe he should have, you know, been up for elimination or, or to leave if he did have such a, you know, good social game. Maybe yeah. he was a good I, I, <laughs> I was very excited to see him go, but you know, the more, I think this episode kind of showed 
how maybe good at, he was at at least w- playing the Sega game, how good he was at playing the yeah. Sega game. Very, mm-hmm. very bonded, obviously, to Ben, to Sega in general. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think that that, you know, I think I get, I see the merits of give, getting Tim out at this moment. Um, quick shout out while we're talking about the immunity challenge. Uh, love the Jelinski shout out. So, Lauren. <laughs> yeah. It was Kara's winner pick. What? <laughs> <laughs> sorry girl <laughs> he keeps getting mentioned so it's like but like okay i don't under i don't understand that maybe i'm out of the loop like why did he why did he say that several, the several. was that something from the first episode yeah so yeah. Jelinski gave up well essentially decided to quit the like sweat and the sweat task because uh-huh. on the instructions it said um uh, you know, this will take several hours and they were only given four. Mm. And then she goes in my head, several is seven. It's in the word. Yeah. Um, okay. I remember that. I remember that. That was just like the reasoning why. And so that's the Jelinski lore. Kara's winner pick lives on. Um, <laughs> uh, episode several. Um, very, very big deal. Uh, at least in my world. I make the several joke yeah. all the time. None of my coworkers get it. <laughs> <laughs> I love everything. That's time. so funny. Dang. I love it. I mean, Dang. honestly, first boot made an impact. I mean, he's making an impact yeah. every single day. Like, you know, I, you say the word several, I immediately think of Jelinski. So good on Jelinski. Yeah. He really oh, wait, he cemented himself. <laughs> <laughs> he really did. While we're talking about Jelinski, have you guys heard of, uh, so Rob Cicero, you know, love him. Incredible. Mm-hmm. Have you heard his conspiracy mm-hmm. theory about Jelinski? His yeah. conspiracy uh-huh. theory. Kara, you heard it. Do you want to say it? Yeah. Go ahead. Go okay, ahead. so <laughs> his theory is that, like, how they keep mentioning Jelinski, bring him up, that they might bring him back next season for 47, 40 mm. several. Kind of like how they brought Bruce back to the next yeah. season. So he's kind of speculating that, is- that that's going to happen. <laughs> Warren, do you think that'll happen? Or is that just a conspiracy theory? Uh, I-, I think it's a stretch. I think it's a stretch. I mean, <laughs> I mean, he was he he definitely had like the persona in the look, I guess. But I mean, I don't I wasn't in the interview, so I don't know if he was just like just great, like just this great um, person that they casted, you know, to that would just come out and play a great game. But um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> He's a cool he guy. Back. I met him. He's cool. But. Uh, I hope he does come back and he and he redeems Kara. Yeah, I will have to pick him as my winner pick again if he comes we'll have back. To. It'll be have no by law. It will be required by law. It will be required by law. Going back to the challenge, um, right after the challenge or closely after the challenge, Q talks about how he threw the challenge. Now, throughout this season, we have heard Q saying that he was pretending, talking about quitting, that he was doing all of this stuff in confessionals, right? But yeah. do we think that Q actually threw this challenge or or do we think that was just kind of, kind of safe face? Lauren, I'll start with you. <laughs> you know what? I if I don't think he threw it or maybe just like getting out of the challenge. If he did truly, I can say in a sense, it could have been brilliant just because in the past, like you see like these big macho players or these athletes come and everybody goes for them after the merge. So that could be a way of him like minimizing himself, you know, making himself less of a threat because he his voice is big and he is making the plans and doing this and doing that. So he's a threat socially. But if he was a threat socially and physically, that would be even worse, you know. So, I mean, if so, it was brilliant. I think he was just saying it because he failed, you know, and he didn't want to like look bad. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever. I mean, if if he did purposely, like, hey, kudos to him. That was amazing. Kara, what do you think? Did I he bail? Think he, I think so. I think he pulled a Jelinski and kind of just quit that one. He just jumped off one to save face. <laughs> but um, and I don't know. I just feel like this wasn't. I feel like this is too risky of a time to throw yeah. something like this. I feel like maybe the next time, but not this one. This one's too right. too much at yeah, stake. And, but this brings up an interesting thing that I was thinking about. 
Is it a good thing to win this first challenge? Obviously, there you always, in theory, want to win an immunity challenge. But this early on, would you be categorized as a threat because you've won this first challenge? Is it worth that? Or um, or do you think that it, 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 you won't really be considered a threat? Threat Last season at this challenge, obviously, it was a different challenge. It was the poll one. D and, mm -hmm. um, D and uh, Kelly won this one. Um, obviously Kelly was voted out a couple of episodes later, uh, whereas D went out on to win the entire right. thing. So mm -hmm. Does it, do you think it really matters if you, you know, think of like, I'm going to throw this one because I don't want to be considered a threat this early on, or do you think it does matter? Anymore? Um, um, okay. Pause. I'm going to say, Hey Jay in the comments, just hello. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, I think for my season, it showed to be true. And because like Franny won, I believe that was maybe the first one. I think it was, I think the, our I think first. It was that one. Yeah. So Franny and Brandon won. And then they received both of them as being a threat. I guess like we should, we can see like as time goes on, like with the next challenge and the next one. But I think that the first one, I don't know. I think it just depends. I think it depends because Kinsey, I don't know if they're going to perceive Kinsey as a threat, you True. know, like, I mean, she only really won it by like a couple of seconds. Right. You know? Right. So right. I think that's, I think that's a very good point. Kara, what do you think about that? Yeah, I agree. And I feel like that, like this wouldn't really be a thought for people looking at Kenzie, but I feel like after Q shouting her out at tribal, and like mm. really putting emphasis on the fact that she won and everything. I feel like now that's kind of going to have people thinking. But if that didn't happen, mm. I don't think it would have made that big a of a difference. difference. I think it's really yeah. important to bring that up because Q, that shout out by Q, uh, obviously Survivor's such a crazy game because something that could be considered so nice in normal day-to-day -day life is like, how dare you? How dare you do that <laughs> to Kenzie? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Because that was that he, he really did. He shined a light on Kenzie. Yeah. And, her, and after also Banu brought up, you know, a couple of episodes ago, how Kenzie is the mastermind. Now, do you think Lauren, <laughs> that this is going to be a problem in the next couple of episodes? You know, Kenzie now being seen that, 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 spotlight on her i hope not man what if q is really the true mastermind here um <laughs> i hope not because i love kenzie so much oh my gosh i love her but um maybe so i think for just thinking production for production to show that i hmm. think that it will come up like they're gonna start seeing or showing it a little bit more like and putting a light on Kinsey and her social game, for sure. Yeah. For sure. We have a couple of comments here really quickly. Frank said the water was too calm. He had his entire tribe of three to throw it with his two backups, Hunter and Tim. So he never had uh, a chance to win uh, or he had, he didn't have to raise his threat by winning, um, uh, which I think is an interesting. He did. He was with a good group. He was with a couple mm -hmm. of people yeah. plus one alliance. Um, ben was the only outlier plus the three Yanu. He was pretty well insulated um, at in that you know rock draw. So I think that's a very good point um, uh, that 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 Frank here brought up. Go ahead, Lauren. Yeah, yeah. What? Okay, I, I don't know if I'm mixing up. Was it this episode that Kinsey and Tiff were saying like we got to watch Q? Yes yep. or no? Mm -hmm. so I think the first time we yeah, so I think I think you're right. He would he did have like some cushion there, but I think they're starting to be on to Q, you know. So he, if I would have been there, I he would have been on my radar regardless, just because he's running the show. They keep saying, "Oh, Q's making the plays, doing this, doing that." And I think it could have flipped easily, very easily on him. Yeah, and to add on yeah. to that, I just want to say, you know, shout out, like, kind of reminds me of last season where D had two number ones, right? D was like, Julie's my number one. And, yeah. um, uh, and Austin's my number one. It's reminding me of Tiff, Tiffany right now. Uh, and so yeah. if I'm Kenzie, if I'm Kenzie, I would want Q gone, not only because he's kind of, you know, tugging me around and what, what we're going to be doing or, or what we're going to be voting and kind of telling me what to do, but also I don't want Tiffany to have another number one here. So if Tiffany brings up, you know, maybe we need to get Q, Q to leave, 
if I'm Kenzie, I'm like, yes, please. Yep. Let's do it. Let's, let's, right. let's have mm-hmm. you leave. Uh, because I don't want my number one to also have a number one. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Right. You should only have one number one. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it scary because you don't know if they're going to pick you. You know, yeah. like you don't know who who they're going to side with. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's scary. And still to this day, I don't think Tiffany really likes to. Tiffany still to say says, I don't, I never, I'm not going to choose a plus one or not a plus one. I'm not going to choose number one. Number one. So, yeah. you know, it's a, it's a very interesting predicament Tiffany is in. I think it's a good spot you know, gives you some power, but it's an interesting predicament. Um, the challenge, obviously, Kenzie and Maria win, respectively. One thing I will add, yeah. is Soda was overtly cheering on Tevin at the end, which I think is yeah. like an interesting thing. To Like, everyone is there. Obviously, they know yeah. they're on the same track, but I feel like that's an interesting moment um, because... If I'm Tevin, I'm like, okay, great. She wants me to win immunity. That means we're together. But Tevin def- did not feel like that. Obviously, mm-hmm. Tevin wanted so did Oda. And she did. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think that, I think, you know, they were kind of foreshadowing a little bit, you know, showing like how Soda was with him, you know, and then he came and he wanted to blindside later. But even at this point, I'm thinking like, you know, she, she was gung ho for Tevin. Like she was ride or die for Tevin. So why would you want to knock somebody that's ride or die for you? Like who else at this moment that they've shown that Tevin truly has on his side? I think the only person I can think of is Hunter, (laughs) but wouldn't you rather have two people? If you're if you're Tevin, don't you want two Two number ones? (laughs) Two number ones. I feel like you're in the middle (laughs) of two number ones. If you're one of the number ones, you don't want the person to have another number one. But right. I think you're right. Right. But then even too, like if you're like, okay, soda is social, man, Tevin, you are social. You're the social butterfly. So you want somebody else there that's gonna be as social or a little bit more of a threat than you. So that target can be off of you, you know? So I don't I don't really see the gameplay in that, you know, why he got soda out or why he led that to get her out. You know, maybe we'll see it next episode or something. But I thought that was really strange for him to get yeah. her. And then he said he wanted to be the first blind side, which was, is it? <laughs> is it? Gem, I don't think so. Jem, Jem uh, went home with an idol in her pocket. I think that she'd be like, um, I, I feel like that was blind side. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know but, he was even a blind side. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know the true, I, I don't know the, if there were was any other strategy behind that, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. Jay added, um, Jelinski was blindsided. So, so yeah, I feel like we've got, at least yeah. got three blindsides under our belt right now. Um, yeah. in this going into yeah. the season, it's first blindside for him. That, that is for sure. First blindside for Tevin. Um, let's talk about this plus one Alliance though, really quickly. Um, and I, and I don't know if you ever have been able to listen to any exit press yet. I listened to, before the podcast, I listened mm-hmm. to some, uh, both Hunter, I mean, both um, Soda and um, Tim's exit press. Um, and it was very interesting to listen to because obviously Tim was asked about the plus one alliance and, and if he really th- thought that this was going to be something real. And Tim was like, no, I actually, oh, the reason why I gave Maria as a name was because I didn't want these strangers to know who my real plus one was, my real number one was who was Ben. Um, and so mm-hmm. obviously you very much took this plus one alliance, this, this random six alliance as, as gospel. Like this is actually, yeah. it. This is, this is what's happening. But Tim, it's number one was Ben. So I feel like honestly, if I think about it, I kind of in the moment agree with Tim, not giving your actual number one to these strangers. You don't know if this is real. People say right. things. People throw things right. at the wall and they stick. Um, but weirdly, it came back to bite him, which I think mm-hmm. is very interesting because he didn't want to go for his actual number one. It ended up being him. Lauren, in this, you know, plus one alliance, would you have gone and actually given your plus your number one to these strangers? Or how would you have played that? I think at that moment, I probably would have uh, told who just a person that, you know, I would be working with. I think what when I was in the game, I didn't, I was kind of like Tiff. I didn't 
specify somebody as my number one. I kind of work with Brandon and uh, Jamie on my tribe and then Carson a little bit afterward. Um, but I think I would have gave a name, but I mean, at least a name that somebody that you would go back. And if like how he asked Maria, Maria was like, what? like that was way off. Like give somebody kind of close, <laughs> you know, like, so I would at least give somebody I, that that we would have confirmed that we were number one. Even when you're in the game, you're talking to everybody and you're like, we're working together. You're not going to tell anybody that you're not working with them. So at that mm -hmm. moment, everybody should be thinking that you're working with them. <laughs> so I mean, at least like you shouldn't have, I don't feel like you should have like known in enemies, you know? So mm -hmm. for Maria to not even like truly know or even think that, that's a red flag. But even yeah. with, with, with Tim, I just, I'm like, man, you should have, he, he showed his cards too much with, with his main tribe. Like, he should have been a little bit more lenient. Like, he just gave it all away. Yeah. Kara, how would you have played mm -hmm. that whole situation with your, with your number, with your actual number one being <laughs> essentially the only one that could have been voted for? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. That, that's kind of tough. I, like, I get why, why he was pushing for Hunter and everything because he didn't want to do Ben. But I feel like he probably could have went about it in, in a better way because he already knew that, or I don't know if he knew, I guess he knew that Q was kind of sus of him on the whole Maria thing that he didn't mm -hmm. tell Maria. So, like, to already then again go back and be like, let's get someone out that's in the six. Like, he kind of just played it. All yeah. Wrong. <laughs> I think so. that's a really good point. I actually totally forgot about that moment where Q was like, Tim is not actually part of this because he's not actually telling Maria, uh, which is already like a yellow flag. And then all of a sudden it's, I'm going for Hunter. And Q's like, excuse me? No. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that's a very uh, great point. I also want to talk about Hunter being a physical threat at this moment in time in Survivor, because obviously he really, <laughs> really helped his tribe. Uh, uh, when yeah. a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. Do you think yeah. though, somebody built like Hunter, you know, kind of a big guy, do you think they typically do well at these individual immunity challenges? Because I feel like they typically don't. I feel like it's usually, uh, you know, it depends on the challenge, but you right. know. Yeah. I'm thinking like, did Jonathan do well? Like, uh, maybe he did. Maybe I'm misremembering, but I, I feel know, like, like Jonathan, go ahead, Lori. Like Brandon remember. didn't do well with I mean, I'm sorry, Brandon did do well with us mm -hmm. on several. Um, right. And then what about like Danny McRae? He won an immunity like later on. I think it just depends on the actual challenge. Yeah. It depends. And I think like, it, I, I don't know. Like, I think that like, there's a lot of different things that are important for specifically individual immunity that tribal immunity is a little bit different. Usually it's like lifting heavy things and doing this, all this other stuff, but right, maybe they're right. not great at like standing in a, a place for a long time, or maybe they don't have great balance, or maybe their foot is too big and right. can't be on a leg. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it is, there are, you know, different things that are important for individual immunity. Um, so Kara, what do you think about that? Do you think Hunter's like a threat physically? I, I do think he's a threat, but I don't think like, I don't think that's like him being a physical threat is like the biggest thing that's threatening about him. Yeah. So true. Yeah. I think yeah. That's a good point. And, and maybe, point. maybe too, just because it's like, it's been like what people say since the beginning, you know? So, so you just hold on to that. Like Stick if you're it. not big, you're just like physical threat, <laughs> you <Yeah>. know, like <laughs> just to have something to say. <laughs> that's so true. That's so true. Yeah. Sticking with the orange group for a little bit. I want to talk about, a little thought experiment or, you know, just your idea on this. If Kenzie didn't win immunity, would she have been the target at this tribal council? Because she's not in the six. Hmm. Obviously she's Tiffany's number one in theory. She's one of her number ones. Um, but would Kenzie have been, you know, up to be voted out this episode? Lauren, I'll start with you. What do you think? Uh, I don't know. So we had Q, Tim, um, Kenzie, Tiff, Ben, and Hunter. And Hunter. Mm -hmm. hmm. And Hunter, 
Tiffany, Q, and Tim are all a part of the Plus One Alliance. We have two Siga, three Yanu, and then one Nami, which is Hunter. So obviously Hunter in theory would be on the bottom, but he's a part of this alliance that uh, Q take is taking very, very seriously. Um, right. I think it would be in between, in theory, between Ben and Kenzie. I think people would have an yeah. issue with it. But do you think that she would have gone? I don't know. I don't know. I think I definitely think out of Ben and Kenzie, I think depending on the tribe and who was out there, they, I mean, to be completely honest, they could have used Ben having that panic attack, you know, to their advantage or saying that he wasn't ready to be out there. He wasn't strong enough or whatever, you know? Um, but I don't see Tim allowing that to happen, but then also I kind of see Q and Tiff protecting Kenzie. And so I don't know. I don't know. Kara, what do you think? I think it, I think potentially she could have gone and I think that it would have came up and like, maybe like Hunter, Hunter, Tim and Ben maybe came together and decided to put votes on her, but I don't think she would have actually gone. I think she still would have been safe either way, but I think so there, Jan there's a world where it could have happened. <laughs> yeah. She has a thought. You may have taken a shot at Kenzie at this tribal, given he tried to get her out pre-merge. That's also true. I forgot mm -hmm. that he did try to do that. Um, so, you know, it's, yeah. I think it's an interesting yeah. experiment. To think, what if she, well, she only won by a couple of seconds. Uh, there is a, there's a world in which she did not have that immunity necklace. And so I think that there, you know, luckily it didn't happen. I mean, I love Kenzie and I love Tim too. So I'm sad that Tim is gone, but you know, very interesting thing, I think. Um, yeah. Let's yeah. go in with the orange tribe a little bit um, before we go over to the other group. Um, we talked a little about how, you know, Tiff and um, Tiff and Kenzie really didn't like that, you know, Q was kind of telling them what to do because they wanted to go for Ben because Ben, Tiffany said that Ben is a sneakier player and that she would have preferred Ben to go home. Did either of you think that Ben, I think Ben is a very big social threat, but do you get sneaky from Ben? Not no. at all. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. That we're not seeing. Yeah, I don't get sneaky that often, or from him at, at, that at least. Mm -mm. No, I don't know what I get from being. I, I think sweet, I'm sorry, and kind. <laughs> I don't see strategy with Ben yet. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I agree. Ben would be easier to read than Tim. Oh yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. Um, let's go to that tribal while we're on the orange tribe. So um, Q really wants to make the game fair, uh, which I think is a very interesting thing he said. He wants to essentially like level the playing field. He said Yanu is really on the bottom, even though Yanu has really had the power the last couple of episodes. So it's mm -hmm. funny to think that in theory, the Yanu three are on the bottom, which is like a, a very silly. Um, uh, and Kenzie, can I just talk about Kenzie's look? At tribal, oh my she gosh. had the pom -pom I mean, yeah. and the mm -hmm. bow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's so cute. Did you, did you before you went to tribal council what, on your season? Did you guys ever talk about like how what you were going to wear, how you were going to like uh, before you were on the jury? Like when you were, <laughs> is that something you talked uh, about before? Oh, uh, like when we were just sitting at tribal. So you said before the jury. You know what? My hair always went up, so I <laughs> I didn't do much of anything. You know who would talk about it the most was Carolyn. Carolyn would get mm -hmm. ready for tribal. She would make stuff. She would make a corsage and like all kind of stuff. <laughs> like she, she would be the one. She was the one. I love that. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> I, 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 I know I have a little bit of a collection of buffs over here um, and I cannot do anything with this buff other than wear it around my neck or wear it on my head or wear it as a shirt. I cannot imagine like maneuvering it to make it like a bow, yeah. you know, like Bob Crawley, mm -hmm. but, uh, but in your hair, it's very impressive. Very impressive. <laughs> the buff um, creativity is great. Right. This no, season. Right. <laughs> off the charts, off the charts. Mm -hmm. Um, Obviously, Tim ended up going home from this group. He sadly did not make the jury. I'm very sad about that. Um, Tim goes home with a 2-4 split. Um, both Stiga members, so both Ben and Tim, voted Hunter. And then Hunter plus Yanu all voted Tim. Um, mm -hmm. I will say I felt like Hunter had a very good tribal council. Hunter was mm -hmm. saying a lot of really good things, um, which makes me think if I was sitting there with him, 
I would, I would, I think I would clock that. He's very eloquent, eloquent right. with what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Right. He knows what he's doing. And I would not want to sit next to him at Final Trouble Council. Did you guys notice that? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Very much so. And a lot of the time he's, they don't show him speaking as much and he's kind of quiet. It looks like around camp, but definitely, you know, I hope they're, they're thinking about that. You know, mm -hmm. when you get in that final tribal council seat, like, are you going to be able to speak and talk about your game as well as what he did? You know, like he kind of talked his way out of that basically. Yeah. So, I mean, just imagine what he could do on the last night. Right. Yeah. Especially like I forget exactly what he said, but it was something about how he's like not tied to the Nami people and everything. And that yeah. like alone, I was like, that was mm -hmm. that was a good line he said. Right, right. And they were taking him in as their baby. Yeah. Like, mm -mm, mm -mm, he gotta go next. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> he gotta go next. <laughs> I know. Not only I guess now he's physical, he's also good at travel council. Bad combo. He can talk. Bad combo. Right. He can talk. Mm -hmm. He can talk. I will say Tim leaving made me pretty emotional. Him stopping on the way and like wiping his face. I did. Mm -hmm. I shed a couple tears. I shed a couple tears. I was so sad. Sexy as dad to do it. Is that what he yeah. said? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, uh, this is a very, uh, another thing at the uh, RHA that they covered on uh, the, I was listening to the RHAPX interview. Uh, Rob did ask him if he pooped. Uh, and he went, I did not poop the entire time I was out there. And the mm -hmm. first time he pooped was on the flight or right before he got on his flight back home. <laughs> oh. oh, I bet that hurt. That's brutal. That is oh so God. brutal. That, I, I mean, bet that hurt. What we need to now do is go rewatch the season knowing that <laughs> Tim did not poop the entire time and be like, he did that and hadn't pooped for 10 days. Right. <laughs> and then poop for 12 days. Look at him go. Dang. Right. Right. That's some strength. That's crazy. Right there. That's I know, strength. right? That, that is uh, that is a uh, 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 Jay goes, OMG, that's nightmare fuel. Literally. <laughs> I know. Literally. Yeah. Literally is. Yeah. Let's go oh. over to the purple group then. Um, so purple group, we had Charlie and Maria, and then the rest were Nami. So four and two, um, soda likes Charlie wants to work with Charlie. Charlie is doing a great job at people wanting to work with him, mm -hmm. wanting to, that does, they don't want to get him out. They want to help him somehow he's in these tough positions and is able to get out. Lauren, what do you think that's because yeah. of, is it because of his social game or what do you think? I think it, it does speak to his social game. Um, right now, he knows he has Maria, and he's in a good spot with her. Um, he seems to build some bonds with Soda also. Um, I mean, he's just, he's, he's, he doesn't truly even, like, if you just, I guess, just looking at him physically, he doesn't seem threatening, you know? And so he has a, he has a nice smile. He has a childish demeanor, like, or a kiddish demeanor. I, I, I don't mean to be offensive. But just like he looks like a little kid, like kind of like a Carson to me, you know, mm -hmm. like so everybody it to me, it just feels like they just want to love on him and just be like, oh, Charlie, it's OK, yeah. you know, but they don't truly know like how great he is or, you know, like him just working with Maria is it's pretty sneaky. Mm -hmm. pretty mm -hmm. sneaky. Mm -hmm. So I think he's in a good spot. I think he's great. How are you clocking uh, his game, Kara? Yeah, I agree. I think he's I think he's doing great um as well. He's he doesn't come off threatening at all. Like there's no one is wanting to vote him out except mm -hmm. Venus that one time when she was trying to get him, but like it that was never even a conversation for anyone else. That was just her saying it. So like he he really is good at escaping situations where he could be the easy one to go twice now and he's right. not even a thought. So he's doing great. Absolutely. Um, well, Jay has a question while we're talking about this. Jay <laughs> asks, does he remind you of Carson, Lauren? Not strategically, but <laughs> but just by his looks. Like, even him being with Maria, it's kind of like the, not saying Maria and Carolyn are the same, but just like the mother-son situation. 
or like you said, like the Malcolm role, you know, like Mm -hmm. he's just filling that role in a sense, you know, so I think he's doing, doing very well with that for sure. Absolutely. And that, that, that image of him like hugging his knees, how could you get that him him out? He's got his cheek on his knees, just like a little lad. He's just like, oh, look at me. You can't get me out. I'm so cute. I'm just so cute. Yeah. I mean, he's holding it up, but he's doing well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's doing a good job. Find your niche, find your niche and, and, and work with it. And I, his niche is baby girl. His niche is baby girl. (laughs) Not baby girl. (laughs) A picture of him with his hand on his hip. (laughs) And as he should, as he should. Good for him. Good for him. Let's go. Let's talk about Liz a little bit. Um, we got a good, a more Liz content that we've gotten this episode mm-hmm. than any most other episodes. Um, a couple of episodes, episodes ago, Hunter dropped that Liz and so Liz did not like soda, and so when Tevin comes up to Liz and is like, "It's time to get soda," she went, "Great, yeah, I've actually wanted to go to Trouble Council to vote soda out." <laughs> um, what what did we think of like where do we think this came from? This like clash of Liz and soda because. We never saw it. And all of a sudden, Liz doesn't like soda. Came out of the left field, I feel like. I have no, I don't know what to think about that. Because I don't really, I don't feel like I really know Liz. You know, Mm -hmm. like, like we haven't seen her. So I don't, is she with, is she team Venus? Is she team, you know, like, is that Tevin's number Mm -hmm. one? (laughs) I don't know. I don't know. You know, like, I would love to see more of her, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even, and she even also after, talks about No, go ahead. Go ahead, Lauren. No, I was just going to say and she was up with Ben that night. <laughs> they didn't yeah. say anything She's about her. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. She was Let's sitting right there. there with Yeah, she was right there with Kinsey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but wow. now, I don't know. <laughs> the edit is doing a uh, billionaire confirmed billionaire Liz is dirty. Um, <laughs> the, the editing is so weird on how they're just like on how they're editing the people going out pre-merge and everything yeah. like even with soda like she was around in the beginning and then all of a sudden she just kind of like they haven't showed her again like i wonder yeah. why they've been editing it the way they've been editing it <laughs> that was very strange to me because i mean even like with the backstory type deals you know that they normally do Mm -hmm. like like, I don't think we saw or we truly got to see a lot of her um it was just one-sided like they wanted to keep her character just like the that way you know Mm -hmm. with the argument with Venus and keep her just I guess sort of one-dimensional which is kind of not fair to me but I mean you know that's how that's how production wanted it to be um you know if you read a lot into the edit maybe you can see like or kind of see their favorites or who they like, or maybe even who's the best storytellers. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but all, um, all, is real. all of that is real. <laughs> um, here's the thing though. I want to talk about Soda also in the fact that everyone is calling her a huge threat, which I do think she's a big social threat. We talked about how, you know, Tevin is also a big social threat, but I do feel like it's a little too early to go for Soda because don't you want to keep somebody who can be your shield? Obviously, right. maybe maybe Liz mm-hmm. is maybe not that. Maybe Liz is like fine to get her, you know, gone because maybe Liz doesn't see herself as the biggest social threat. But you said it earlier, Lauren. If Tevin thinks of himself mm-hmm. as a social person, which other people are seeing, then right. why go for the uh, one other person this early in the jury? slash merge time you know maybe keep her two or three episodes i just think that it's a little too early do you think it's early or what do you think lauren i think it's way it was way too early because i mean who's gonna who's gonna cover him you know like Mm -hmm. who's gonna be a bigger threat than tevin at this point he's king tevin according to venus right so i mean they they can see how venus is playing um, and they know what which way she's going or what she's going to do. She's kind of like, you can read her in a sense. But Tevin, you know, I don't know. And I could, I could actually see maybe even Maria coming for Tevin. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Yeah. Kara, how do yeah. you feel about it? Yeah, I think it was too soon. Well, 
Yeah, I think it was too soon for Soda to go. But also, I feel like, what if they got Tevin at this vote instead? Because it was like mentioned by been... me. Yeah, I feel like that maybe would have been a better move. Mm. I don't know. I think it's, I also kind of think it's a little bit too, too early soon. for Tevin, too. Um, if I'm, you know, if I'm Soda or somebody, I, I do also think it's a little bit too early. But I do think it's interesting um, that. Venus is willing to throw out other people's names all the time. Everybody. <laughs> yeah. He has guts like nothing I've ever seen. Like she yeah. is just like, yes, it's, and she's like the opposite of Sandra. Sandra's anybody but me. <laughs> Venus is like, I'm on the chopping block. Okay. Well, I actually want this person that we haven't mentioned at all in the last, you know. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm, I, her reads, I think, are correct. Like, I think that, you know, the Charlie Reed, I think, was correct. I think the Tevin Reed mm -hmm. is correct. I just think mm -hmm. that she just maybe doesn't have the bonds in order to pull them off, right? Right, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. I think that's where she, she kind of struggled socially. She didn't yeah. have them. She wanted them. But, mm -hmm. but even, like, I mean, look at the interaction she had with Maria. <laughs> like... Yeah. What was that about? Let's you know talk about that. that interaction that was, was wild. Crazy. Yeah. Absolutely like what wild. happened before for for her, like for Maria to just be so straightforward with her too. You know, like mm -hmm. I, I I don't know. I, what, did, what did happen, Kara? Do you remember what happened? Did we see it? It so it was when Venus went to Maria and was like pitching voting out soda right mm. that's what it was and maria didn't like like how venus was bringing it up to her like kind of being like oh so like maria was like okay i'll think about it i'm not going to commit to anything i want to talk to everyone else and then venus was like oh so you're, you're gonna go work with tevin instead and so like things like that were happening which she didn't oh, yeah, like. yeah 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 she was throwing Very tevin's cool. name yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And when she was saying no, there was like Maria wasn't agreeing. So yeah, yeah. Ooh, I mean, man, why? I was that's stuff that you so do it. Yeah, I mean, but even like that's not stuff you say in in confessionals. You know, mm -hmm. like you're straightforward in your confessionals, but when you're in front of them, like you don't say that. <laughs> I don't know, like, oh my god, but maybe, but then like they're still keeping her. You know, maybe yeah. just because they know, like, she's going to tell, she's going to tell it straightforward anyway. I yeah. don't know. I like, they know how Venus is. Like, everyone knows how she is, how she acts. So I feel like that's not as threatening as people that you don't know how to read them and what they might do in the game. Like, you know, Venus is going to be sneaky and throw out someone's name, but everyone knows that, you know? So yeah. I feel but like that lessens her threat level. I would, I would argue that like, I don't know if I'm Tevin, did, did it not get back to Tevin that Venus was vote throwing out his name? If I'm Tevin, I go, why, why would I want to keep somebody in the game that is actively throwing out my name? Um, right. That, that must not have gotten back to him. Cause I think it, she was doing it to either Charlie or Maria or both. Um, yeah. but like, I don't know. I just don't. Like, and it was like a real thing. She had like a real strategy. She said, we're going to put three on Tevin, mm -hmm. two on Soda, and one will be on me. And I know that. And that's fine. Like, that is a real strategy, a thought out thing that was about to happen. And if I'm Tevin, I go, right. okay, that's not okay. I need her to be gone. Um, and I get, you know, the devil that you know versus the devil that you don't. And I understand that. But like, I think that now, and I would love to hear both of your thoughts on this. Now that Venus has made it to the jury stage, of survivor of this season i do not think that she's getting voted out i think she's going to be a zero vote finalist i've been thinking the last couple of episodes that she's going to be a zero vote finalist because mm -hmm. i would take i mean venus everyone is just she's butting heads with everybody and it's great television yeah. and i love her. she's an icon um but i would want to sit next to her because yeah. She literally mm -hmm. the mayor of Ponderosa, the queen of Ponderosa, as Dakota said, so does going to be the queen of Ponderosa. <laughs> is your, actually your biggest enemy. Like and maybe enemy is a strong word. And Soda sets the tone yep. for Ponderosa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if I am anybody, I'm like Venus is locked in. I'm going to take her to the end or I'm going to try to at least. What would you guys do? 
Yeah, I agree. I think she's going straight to the end and but not going to win. <laughs> yeah, no, she, she's got to think about those relationships and she doesn't have mm-hmm. them. And in order to win, like you have to have you have to have some type of strategy and you got to have those relationships. And if you don't have anybody on your team, then what are you going to do? You know, like yeah. mm-hmm. I, I would take her. For sure. At this point of the game, you know, who knows what's going to happen? What if she starts winning immunities and doing different things like that? I don't I still don't think she could she would get votes. <laughs> but no. but I mean, who knows? You know, who knows? I mean, maybe this is the opposite of a bitter jury. Maybe they get it to the end and they're just like so excited because she was like willing to make some moves and do the stuff. And they just like love her for that. But like, I don't know. <laughs> She's done a lot of stuff to, to a couple people that they had to be like, why are you doing this? Um, so I'd be interested. Jay agrees that Venus is locked in as a zero vote finalist, six of the new era, like clockwork. Um, Mm. so I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I think it's an interesting thought. Mm. Let's go to the purples tribal council. Obviously we know soda was voted out another two, four split. Um, but Liz, Liz is excited. She's excited, uh, about the tribal council. And she was also (laughs) excited about the split. She liked that it was split. And I feel like that's maybe the first we ever heard anyone was like, I like this split or I like that we're doing a split while it's happening. <laughs> I don't I remember. Sure. I kind of, I'm sorry. I, ne- I, I barely, I didn't even pay attention to Liz in this episode. <laughs> I don't know what happened with Liz. <laughs> the, re- the reason why I remember Liz so much this episode is because I thought it was <laughs> iconic that she went, I did not even bring my bag to tribal council. No! <laughs> yes. I no, if she would have said that, I would have voted her out right there. Like the audacity. <laughs> that that is a bold thing to do. The audacity. It's like, what well, who do you think you are, girl? <laughs> and she did it. And the craziest thing about that was like, I am Sega Strong, and I am so Sega Sega Strong that I mm-hmm. did not bring my bag to Trump Council. And then she voted out a Sega or Nami. Sorry, Nami. I'm so not <laughs> Nami strong. That's what it is. I'm so Nami strong that, and she voted out a Nami. She voted out Soda. So the reason, in theory, that she didn't bring her bag to tribal council, uh, she ended up voting. It was like wrong. It was a bluff. Should she play poker? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did she, but did she have to do that? <laughs> like, was it? Why? <laughs> Uh, great TV. That's why. That's why, Lauren. Great, great television. Good TV, yeah. <laughs> but, um, like, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, maybe she can use that. Like, if she makes it, she's like, you know, I bluffed. And it's her strategy. And- she's so, her blind confidence is her strategy throughout the game, which could be interesting. Yeah. It, it is, though. It truly already is. <laughs> I mean, Good TV, that's for sure. I hope we get more Liz confessionals going forward Me to see what too. she's really thinking. Me too. Me too. Jay says, she goes, how dare you not pay attention to rumored billionaire Liz will talk. No, Jay, it's confirmed. Confirmed billionaire. Confirmed by who? I love, no, not really. Um, oh, I love. I was like, oh, what? Liz let me just say, Liz is so down with these jokes. She thinks they're so funny. And I love someone who can <laughs> joke with us as well. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, she's she's super about, sweet, though. Super sweet. She's so yeah. sweet. She is. That's what I love about the cast, the cast, the, se- the new era. Like, everyone is just, like, so wonderful and so just, like, kind. Um, at least to the fans uh, that you, you know, right. meet them. So, um, right. Yeah, huge, huge. Uh, a bit, I'm, I'm a Liz fan. I am a Liz fan. Um, I'm just gonna borrow a few dollars, like <laughs> and highway. <laughs> just a couple. Um, no. million. No, I'm just kidding. Um, was so I have a question about Maria at Tribal Council. So Maria talks about how she has she got all gussied up for a party and she wore her favorite red necklace. Um, but nobody wanted to talk to her. Nobody wanted to discuss it with her. And I've only seen one season of Big Brother, but. Maria was kind of acting like she was, and I I think I saw a couple of tweets about this. So I think it was maybe Mike Bloomberg or Mike Bloom or Rob Sunino or somebody saying this, which is helped me make the connection. But it was almost like she was like a head of household at Big Brother because Mm -hmm. in Big Brother, when you're head of household, 
you are the one that makes the nomination. So everyone comes and talks to you. But when you win immunity on Survivor, if you do not have the numbers, you might not still be included in the conversation. But Maria right. was expecting to be included in the conversation. Lauren, as someone who was out there on Survivor, you know, if you're if somebody wins immunity and they're not in the numbers, do you even make a point to talk to them or do you not? Um, so there were several in instances where, or I can think of two on my season where like Franny won immunity and nobody's talked to her. And she was like, nobody's talking to me. And she knew like, and I mean, you don't have to talk to them. If they're not in the numbers, then why? Why does it matter? You know? Um, so I don't think that it's, it matters, you know, if they're not a part of it. But I, didn't people talk to her though? No, Did they Dana didn't. Really her? Yeah. yeah. She like, just why? said she's not feeling the power, but winning immunity doesn't necessarily give you power. The numbers. Right. Give you power. Right. Right. Because I want immunity mm -hmm. and then my supposedly number one got voted out. <laughs> like it was bombs at it. Like Brandon was voted yeah. out with an idol. Um, mm -hmm. So. I mean, and and I was on the wrong side <laughs> and yeah. I didn't know what was going on, you know? So I had no power right. yeah. other than to save myself. Right. Carol, what did you think about the moment? Uh, Jay thinks it was a bluff. Mm hmm. Mm. I don't know. Maybe. I, I don't know. Cause like we did see them talk to her. She was included mm -hmm. in the conversations. She knew what was going on, so. She voted Maybe the right way. Yeah. So, yeah. but why? But why would that be? Like, why was that even relevant? Or why would why would it be a bluff to Soda? You know, like or like. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, Did she talk great. to Soda? I she, I'm pretty sure we saw her talk to Venus. I think we saw her talk to Soda. At least we saw Charlie talk to Soda. Uh, um. So I just, you know, I think it was a very interesting moment um, because I do think it shines a light on in Survivor. And one of the reasons why I prefer Survivor over Big Brother is I like that when you win immunity, it does not necessarily mean that you have all the power. What it means is you right. can get to the next episode, the next vote, and maybe get yeah. some more power. But that's what I think is right. interesting about Survivor is you win doesn't necessarily mean that people are going to want to or need to talk to you. Mm -hmm. Right, right. I like True. it. Um, so obviously we know Soda gets voted out. She was blindsided. And that also, I had the, I was very fortunate. I went to Soda's watch party last night. Um, it was very, Aww. very fun. Um, it was, I'm going to cry. It was like pretty emotional being there. I've never been at somebody's Aww. like vote out episode. Um, yeah. And she, husband was there and she was just like giving everyone hugs and taking pictures of everybody. And she just like, if I were sitting voted as forever, I think I might want to, you know, be by myself on on in the couch at home. And, yeah, and, you know, you know. But she wanted to share it with like a bunch of people, and it was such a lovely oh. moment. Um, and so I did cry. Mm. I cried twice. I cried at the yeah. time vote out. And I cry when people are emotional. I get emotional. Um, <laughs> I'm an emotional person. <laughs> um, but it was interesting. Blindside. Did you notice this or did you see this? So when Soda talked to Venus, she said, uh, was it you? And Venus said, yes. And then they cut to Tevin, mm -hmm. mouthing the word no. Mm, yeah. And I wonder next episode, Kara, go ahead. Um. Yeah, no, I was just like gonna say, I feel like, like Tevin thinks like this is his move, like he did this, but I feel like it's valid for Venus to think that this was her move. I think that's completely yeah. valid of her to think that because she did talk to um, Charlie and Maria about taking out Soda. I'm sure Tevin didn't talk to her about anything. And if they did, it was just, oh, we're gonna vote Charlie or something. And so I, and then when the votes came out, like the three of them did vote together and voted Soda out and the other two voted Venus. So I feel like it's completely valid for her to think that this was her move, even though Tevin did maybe start, start it and like talk about it first, you know, like, yeah, he. He did, but I think it's her. It's valid for her to think this. I yeah, know. I think it is valid, but it's going to be important, I think, too, for Soda to know 
Because like you mm-hmm. said, like soda is going to set the tone and for the other people to know. Because when you get to Ponderosa, you're still playing a game. And so everybody comes back with a story and they are voting. So like, I mean, if if she thinks that Venus got her out and she's like, oh, that's great gameplay, you know, like that could give be kudos to Venus, mm-hmm. you know, so I hope they do like piggyback next episode and, and kind of show maybe like Kevin saying something or Kevin bringing it up or trying to take credit or something like that. Yeah, we'll see. I think it'd be very interesting if he, you know, maybe said something in a confessional, but didn't say it to anybody else. It reminds me of the Bruce vote out where immediately after Bruce gets voted out, Emily takes credit and then Emily is gone yeah. that episode. Um, and so mm. even if that it's his move, obviously perception is reality. You want to be able to call out your moves or call out even somebody else's moves, take credit, do it, whatever. Um, right. You want people to perceive you as a threat. But you also don't want to be seen. That's another reason why I love Trevor. You don't want to be seen as too big of a threat. Because if you're too Mm -hmm. big of a threat, then people will, you know, try to go after you because of that. As we saw, like I said, when when Emily claimed the Bruce vote out, essentially. Um, And so I think it's going to be very interesting to see Tevin's next steps. And if he does it well, then I think that he might be set up to go further in the game. But if he doesn't, I do think that he has, there was an opportunity for him to be voted out next. If people are like, oh my God, he actually was the one that did the soda vote. I thought they were so close. Wow, actually he's being sneaky and he's doing all this Mm -hmm. stuff and going against the alliance. So it's all time. Survivor's also a lot about timing, a lot about luck, a lot about timing. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. Would he really want to claim that? (laughs) Like... I don't think it would help him. No, no. But then even with so, I mean, even with Venus, if she claimed it, like, do you really think it's going to help her game? You know, mm-hmm. like, or who do you think is going to even believe her that was at that tribal council? You know, yeah. like, is Maria, you know, is Maria going to be like, yeah, that was Venus's vote? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> no, they're not going to no. say that. Or even like Liz or who else was there? Charlie. Like, they're not going to say that. They're not going to give it to her. Yep. I think Venus will feel good going into the next day and the next tribal be like, oh, like people actually went with me. Like I did something. So I feel Mm. like that's going to be interesting to see play out now because I feel like she's going to, she's going to feel good about it. I think. Like a little bit more confident. Yeah. I think you're right. You think she'll get more aggressive? Venus? (laughs) Probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I definitely think so. And I think it's going to be incredible. Mm-hmm. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Um, well, obviously, Soda was blindsided. We saw the two people leave. Soda is now the mayor of Ponderosa, queen of Ponderosa, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I always, right before we go into commercial, Lauren, I always ask, is there something that we did not cover from this episode that you want to talk about? Um, Kara, I'll start with you so Lauren can think a little bit about, you know, maybe yeah, yeah, there's something to talk about. <laughs> yeah, I, d- I did want to talk a little bit more about Ben and Kenzie and the whole panic attack. And I feel like how that foreshadowed the tribal council. And I think someone mm. commented about it too. But I feel like that was that was a big moment for Kenzie too because I feel like that made a big ally out of Ben and I think that'll be important for her to going forward for the two of them and I think that also is part of the reason why he stayed over Tim Mm. interesting yeah because I mean that's a number for her yeah Mm -hmm. for sure a number for her and it I mean it shows the type of person that she is and I think that Ben would vouch for her in any situation hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. And she said something that I liked. She said, sometimes you just got to be there for somebody and just sit with them through it and be with them through the storm. Sometimes that's all someone needs. And I thought that was just so nice. And yeah, that was like another real moment in the episode. I just love her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is love her so much. 
I love 90 minute episodes, right? I know that some people don't love mm-hmm. 90 minute episodes, but I am so here for 90 minute episodes because, you know, I think that there are some things like this that are really human moments that we will, we would not have seen in other seasons, yeah. right? You know, very, so many often, like oftentimes after a season of Survivor, people will go, we were so close. Like I'm thinking, um, uh, uh, Lauren, I think you and Jamie were, were some of the people like after the season, you were like, we were so close and people know that yeah. people knew we were close didn't show how close we actually were. Um, yeah. And I think we we're, not even after, we're getting <laughs> right. And we're getting yeah. more of that content, why people are close and it's showing more reasons why people would vote together in the future. Um, because no. I think, I think that's something that could have been easily lost on the cutting room floor, you know? Right. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Kara. And like another thing, and also Jay commented about it. This is the second time now we've seen Kenzie make fire, which is interesting. Mm. So, or some, yeah, Kenzie was shown tending the fire. Yeah. So this is like the second time she's been around the fire. Oh so. man. Mm. She better, she better not lose in fire or anything. Oh my God. Or, I would die. I, I would, I, 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 I would be upset. <laughs> so i um only started choosing winner picks in season 37 of survivor which the first season i started watching live the closest the best winner pick i've ever had was lauren ashley beck uh, i chose her for season i chose lab um and mm. when she lost fire I literally had to leave the room. I was so emotional. <laughs> I was like so sad. I was so sad. If that yeah. happens, I would Kenzie was my winner pick. Um, she was up there. Up Tiffany was my winner pick. But um, if Kenzie really? loses, I would be that close to being emotional. Yeah. Lauren, did you have a, a winner pick? Kenzie. Kenzie is my winner pick. Great. You know, I didn't even think about about Tiff. She's kind of in the in the shadows right now, but I can see her doing very well. Very, I can I, see her winning. I could in, in New yeah. Era Survivor. This is the most confident I've ever been about my winner pick. Um, there are other times where I, most of my winner picks have been mares of ponderosas. It's been Tiffany from forty one, <laughs> Chanel from forty two, Owen from forty three, Caleb mm-hmm. in forty four, and no, Caleb in forty five. Who was forty four? Oh, it was Helen. Oh. I went to. Come- I went to college Uh-oh. with Helen Lee. Incredible. So I knew her in, in, in person. And um What? Uh, yeah. Yeah. We were That's actually in the cheerleading crazy. team together. Isn't that crazy? Did not know <laughs> Helen was a cheerleader. Yeah, what yeah, she was. Uh-huh. Dang. Um, but yeah, this is the best I've ever felt about my winner pick in terms of their edit and how they're performing. Yeah. Just me yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Dang, if Tiffany <laughs> win, I would be happy. I would be happy with the Tiff win. I would be so I would happy be, with Tiff. Yeah. yeah. I would be more Karen. happy with the Kenzie win, though. <laughs> <laughs> Remind us, since Jelinski got voted out, who is who has your, who is your new winner pick now? My new winner pick is Ben. And I just have to say, I was nervous in this episode, in episode several, where he was maybe gonna get some votes and could have gone and i was like this is too too much that he my new one is like, going on this episode so i'm glad that didn't happen but also correction jay said that it was actually ben who is shown making the fire twice not Kenzie. oh so, dang but i'm rooting for ben all the way <laughs> incredible, man, incredible. I man i got i just gotta see a little bit more from ben i gotta mm-hmm. see yeah. a little bit more from him yeah Fourth has that okay. idol. Yo, oh, that is something that I wanted thing. to talk about. We have, so Tevin has an extra vote that was not talked about at all this episode. Oh, yeah. And mm-hmm. he has an idol that was not talked about at all this episode, even though obviously these were smaller tribes, but yeah, Tiffany is going in and Hugh and Kenzie know about the idol, obviously, but it doesn't seem like any other people know about this idol. Mm-mm. Idolisha. I mean, she's, she's making her. Oh, yeah, Idolisha. <laughs> now, if she makes a big move with that idol, like, that would be killer. That'd be that so would good. be killer. Yeah. It'd be so good. It would be so tasty. It'd be so good. I would I would die. I would die. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
a lot of actual hidden first... idols this time. Literally, this I know, not actually public <laughs> as usual. Mm -hmm. As usual. Uh, before we go to our commercial, is there anything else this episode that we want to talk about before we get into some questions from the from the viewers? All right. Well, we will be right back after this bracketology ad and we will get into social hour as well as award season. So we'll see you in a second. My name is Jonah Fielko and I'm the CEO of bracketology.tv fantasy sports for reality television. We offer fantasy games for shows like The Bachelor, Survivor, Big Brother, RuPaul's Drag Race, and Counting. You start by creating a community. Within your community, you can create a fantasy league for each show that you want to play fantasy games for. Within the league, you can choose up to three of our four game types, and our most popular is the Advanced League. Choose a team of contestants, and depending on what they do and say during the episode, that's how your team will gain or lose points each week. We also have elimination style games like our confidence pool. This is where you choose how confident you are that each contestant will survive elimination that week. And we've also got March Madness style brackets. Come back a couple hours after the episode to check your scores and watch you climb the leaderboard. Bracketology is free to play, so grab your friends, your family, your coworkers, and head to bracketology.tv for more info. Bracketology is so fun um, that I'm in like four or five different leagues and it's so easy to like, it's so easy to be in multiple leagues on Bracketology, whereas other things that I've done, it's like kind of a pain, but in this one, it's so easy. So everyone should get it. I'm not biased or anything. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> let's get in to social hour. We've got some really great questions for Lauren and also our panel, me and Kara. Um, so let's get into it real quickly. Let's start off with this question. This was something we didn't talk about. So Paige, Paige Dezolka asked, why did Tevin vote Venus? So it was Venus, uh, sorry, it was Soda and Tevin that voted Venus and everybody else. So Liz, Venus, um, Maria, and Charlie voted Soda. So why would, it, when, when, v, when Tevin knew where it was going, why would, why would he vote Venus, Lauren? We'll start with you. I think. I think that maybe he just wanted to, like, he knew Soda was going, so he didn't want to break that bond, knowing mm -hmm. that she was going to, like, if she didn't make it, like, let's say somebody played an idol or something, you know, for her, she played an idol, then he could say, oh, well, I still voted for you. I, I didn't vote for you, Soda, you know, so just to keep mm -hmm. that relationship going, because he he still had it with her, um, and then now she's on the jury, so, I mean... Just to kind of save them, you know, save their bond, save their relationship, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kara, what do you think? Yeah. I completely agree. I think that's why. I think he just didn't want to vote her. I think he wanted to save face and everything. Yeah. I I think that you're probably right, but I don't really get the strat or the thought process behind that because, you know, um, if he ever wants to claim this move. He has no agency. He voted, really. he voted incorrectly. Yeah. And so if you're looking at the, the the information in front of you, if I'm soda, if I'm somebody else on the on the jury, and say in theory for this this thought that Tevin and Venus are in final three together. And you know, Venus soda goes, you know, Venus, you made a great move getting me out. I, you know, I do think I was a threat, blah, 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 blah. And Tevin goes, Well, actually, it was my idea. I was one that actually made that move. Why then? Then if I'm so dumb, go. Why would you vote for Venus? Then I don't think I don't think you're telling the truth. Um, I I get what he's trying to do and trying to save face, but like then he can never claim that move as his own, in my opinion. Hmm. Yeah, you know, I wish they sh would have showed more of like the last like few minutes and the last conversations of like deciding on how like the vote and all how each of them yeah. were going to vote because I feel like there had been something else that they didn't show. Maybe they'll show it in the next yeah. episode. I don't know. And maybe yeah. you see it. Like, you know how they sometimes do those like flashback episodes or something? Or at the beginning mm -hmm. of the episode? Yeah. 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 Frank says Tevin voted for Soda uh, to secure the jury vote. Uh, yeah. Or voted for Venus for the secure. Uh, he never portrayed her. Um, yeah. I mean, you're probably right. I just, I just think that, you know, this is when you have to, in my opinion, weigh what is more important. Uh, in theory, securing a, a, a jury vote because you didn't, you voted with that person or 
claiming or, or, or making a big move and saying like, you know, owning that move, you know, it's like, I, you can't really do both. Um, yeah. So yeah. An interesting thing. I, I think it's interesting. And I was shocked when I saw it was Tevin voting for Venus. Cause I thought it was going to be Char. Uh, I thought it was gonna be Charlie, honestly. Same. Same. Cause I thought Charlie was going to be like worried that it was actually going to be him. And he was just going to, you know, try to right. pile up with somebody else, but Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Um, we have another question from Natalie to Marhan. Marhan, uh, do you like earn the merge and earn the jury? Mm. My answer is no. no, but Lauren, Lauren, <laughs> no, no, um, I don't like it. I don't like it. If you're not going to be there, you're just not going to be there, you know, but when you get to that merge beach, I feel like you, you're you part of it, you know? So I don't know. I think it kind of messes with the dynamic a little bit, but I don't know. That's just, I, I don't have any like in-depth definition of as to why I just hate I it. Totally agree. <laughs> I totally I, yeah, <laughs> <feels, laughs> I don't like that seafood didn't make the jury. I don't like, I just don't like yeah. it. I don't like it the jury i didn't like that lydia didn't make the jury like i just don't like it yeah, yeah. like if you're there like you're a part of it now you know like mm -hmm. if they're not gonna be there then put them somewhere else because they they could have a say in it too you know they could have some perspective since they made it to the merge beach so i just think it's weird yeah agreed kara do you agree i agree i don't like it at all i really really don't like it <laughs> it's my least favorite twist of all of the new era mm -hmm. twists like mergatory and earning the merge, I I don't like. I I my, mainly, and this is the main reason why I don't like it. I love a merge feast. I love mm -hmm. when you, in theory, put down your weapons and you get to enjoy mm -hmm. this really fun time. But you're still playing the game. But you're playing mm -hmm. the game with everybody. You're meeting everyone for the first time, and maybe you've had a couple of wines, and you're meeting all these new people. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a very fun moment for viewers. And it's fun right. for the yeah. cast too, but it's very fun for viewers. And I feel like we are robbed of a good merge feast with the merge Tory. And I'll stand by yeah. that. I agree. I agree. I agree. And it's always with like a rock draw or something, you know? So it's like by yeah. look what team you're going to be on. And that sucks. Yeah. Like, I agree. Like if you had everybody sitting there getting food and stuff, like people are going to start talking. People are going to say all kind of stuff. You know, so mm -hmm. I think I think they are like missing out with having that merch piece. Yep. For sure. Agree. Jeffrey, I know you're listening to this. Uh <laughs> bring it back immediately. <laughs> this is we're not, not a negotiation. Um, I do have a knife <laughs> <in my> <laughs> Um okay. Our fearless leader, Randy, asked, did you ever experience a panic attack out on the island and who was there to support you? Did you ever have like an emotional moment out there on the island, Lauren? You know, the, um, most of my emotional moments were in confessional when like mm. they would probe you and ask you questions because I didn't really want to show my emotions with everybody else. I think the one that affected me the most, though, was at the very end. I mean, I don't think they showed it. It was like right before I started looking for the idol and I didn't find it. <laughs> um, I pulled out my letters from home from my boys and I was reading them and I was like breaking down because I'm like, I'm on the last day. I don't have any anybody here with me. Like, I don't like this is it, you know, and I'm going to make it all the way to the end and not get it. And then one of the producers came over and was like probing me with questions, questions, questions. So I didn't really have anybody there to support me <laughs> in that moment. I wish I did. You know, it wasn't Somebody maybe attack, making it I, slightly worse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I like got up and walked away. I was so upset. Um, but they didn't show much of it. But I mean, I think it's better if you are having those moments at that that it's at this time and not like further to the end where you're just by yourself, essentially, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So. All right, we've got this. This was a question that Jay posted earlier in the um, episode. Jay asked, would Venus be the best zero vote finalist of the new era? 
or dropping hmm. some tea here. This is a what if. We don't know if she's going to make it to the end. I do feel it in my gut. Um, I think she'd be incredible. Mm -hmm. She would give a good bounce to the council. I like Carolyn. <laughs> uh uh. <laughs> Carolyn, I think I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. It's too soon know. to say. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's true, and know. it's also like we haven't seen her performance. I feel like it's all based on mm -hmm. the performance of Final Trouble Council. If she if she just kind of blows it, then I would say probably not. But if she has, if she puts on a show, then absolutely. Maybe not absolutely. Oh, but like yeah. maybe, you know. Oh yeah. I would love to see her goddamn fight. <laughs> I think she would. She would she'd be, be scrappy. Great. She would she yeah. would use it. You know, she <laughs> would like be fight dirty and I would be here for it. I would be so here for yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is kind of another question. This was sent in earlier um, from Caitlin Chass. Um, and this is a, kind of what we were talking about earlier slightly. Um, she says, or they say opening credits so, show Soda with fire. Did anybody else think that she was going to be in the final four fire making? Oh. We have become edit readers. That's what Survivor <laughs> fans are now. It's like, what are the clues that we're hinting? What is happening? <laughs> um <laughs> Like has that, that ever Carson, been a thing in the past? Well, there was a shot with Carson in his glasses where there was oh fire with the fire, <laughs> yeah. Oh. Like guessing, like oh my god, they're gonna make fire because they showed him with fire like a bunch of times, which is real. It's very real. I didn't notice the soda thing. I did notice I the um. I noticed that Kenzie made fire, and I was like, interesting. Um, mm -hmm. but. I didn't notice that soda was next to fire in the in the in the opening sequence. Me either. Maybe it was foreshadowing like her torch being snuffed. Ooh, <laughs> I don't know. Being the first juror. Kind of, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, kind of a follow up, but not really. Lauren, how did it feel that you guys did not have a title sequence? Mm -hmm. Oh, that we didn't have like a name. Yeah, yeah. You didn't have like the name card thing, right? You guys were the last one to not have one. Were we the last ones? Because 45 had it. Because I was, because they, they did it. Uh, 45 had like the like theme song and stuff. They had like um, the theme song with all of their names. Because you guys didn't get that, right? Oh, no, no, no. We didn't get it. I, that sucks. It, you didn't like it? Because, because when you see that, though, you remember the people, you know? Because mm -hmm. like before, you can say, like I will watch previous seasons and I'll be like, who was that again? You know, if they were pre-marriage at the very beginning. But now like I still remember like Jelinski and all and whomever else, like Banu and all of them. Like I remember them. But it, because yeah. they're still in that in the beginning. So that really sucks not to have it. You know, fans make it, but to have it on the episode every single time, that's yeah. pretty cool. I'm I'm yeah. a little jealous. And I also think that like the title, like the the opening credits or whatever is a great way, like for super fans, you know, we're, we're listening to all these podcasts, we're listening to X interviews, but it's like my parents, you know, who don't do all of this extra stuff. They get to know people because they get to see them yeah. over and over again on the screen. Right. Or my friend yeah. like doesn't like, will sometimes watch and it'll be like four episodes behind. I'll be like, how could you be four episodes behind? I cannot <laughs> imagine that. <laughs> Yeah, having I, I, <laughs> my friend was four episodes behind, and I couldn't talk to them about this show. I was like, Can you please watch this freaking show? Um, but yeah, yeah, the the, the opening mm -hmm. credits really does kind of show who is there, and it's also like probably really emotional. To, you know, you went through all the casting, you did all the stuff, and then you see yourself right. in slow mo on a big screen. Mm -hmm. Right, right, screen. it's cool. Pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Um. Okay, so we've got this question from Survivor Now. This was uh, sent to us uh, via our own Instagram. Lauren, who do you feel you would work well with on this cast? Kenzie, duh. Um, <laughs> no, I would. I but Kenzie worked well with everybody. Um, I think. I think, in a sense, I would try to roll in Venus. Mm. I think just as a player you know thinking like she's she's kind of by herself and she i think she would she would follow whomever wanted to like befriend her you know mm -hmm. whoever came and was like hey i'm working with you 
I'm going to be loyal to you. And if you showed her just for like one or one or two votes, I think she would be in and she could do the dirty work for you. So yeah. I think she would be a really good person to work with. That's just for me outside looking in, you know, but um, Kenzie or I would try to really in Venus for sure. Okay. Kara, have you ever answered this question? Who do you think you would work well with on this season? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think, <laughs> I feel like I would probably work well with like a, like Charlie, like him. Yeah. Or like, I feel like that's yeah. who I would gravitate towards. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I would, I think I'd fit in very well on Yanu. I'd be very happy on Yanu. I, I really like, <laughs> yeah. I really, okay, number one, number two. Um, yeah. I really vibe with Kenzie and Tiffany and I've never, I haven't met Q, but have I met Q? No, I don't think I have. I saw him, but I, I he was, he was kind uh, of, I mean, I've yeah, never yeah. met anyone he's in. Uh, who, what, who are they again? Um, no, but I, <laughs> really feel like I would like get along and like Jelinski. I feel like I could really fit well with on um, fit well Jess Bon. I didn't mean I've never met Bonnie, but like I feel like I would fit well there. So I'm I, I could mm -hmm. I could do Yanu. I think. Um, yeah. Okay. Next yeah. question. We've got a uh, Dakota uh, in the comments asked, "What do you think of both groups not knowing who was voted out until they got back to camp?" Great observation, Dakota. That I didn't think of until this very moment. Mm -hmm. Did, Why didn't, didn't the past, the like, people? didn't and like in the past, didn't they like come and sit on the side and watch or no? Yeah, yeah, they did. Why I didn't they remember do in the past that happening? I don't know, that is weird because then I, I feel like that would kind of sway. Well, who went yeah. him? Yeah. Oh, because you see them walking in and then being like, who is the other people? So I gotta look back at my notes. Um, so in Maria uh, showed us heaven. Mm -hmm. mm. I like that they don't know who went home because I feel like that would influence or it could yeah. influence what the second um what whichever tribe goes. I feel like it could definitely influence a vote. So I like that it's kept separate. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. I think it would would maybe have swayed it a little bit because I, I I can see Maria coming in and being like. Yeah. But I think if if Charlie were really the person that they were gunning for, I think that it would have swayed. But because it ended up being that it was not Charlie, that it was uh, somebody on Nami, I think it, it probably would have kept the same. Because if um, if Sega sees, you know, one of our numbers is gone, they probably would have wanted to go out after a Nami anyway. And so because they were already going after a Nami, it ended up working out well. So the only thing I could think of is if maybe Nami was like, oh man, they got a Sega, let's go out after another Sega. But I think that the cracks oh. in Nami are big, don't you think? Yeah. 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 They or wouldn't, oceans, they wouldn't work this. together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or was it Hunter or something? Somebody said that. Um, <laughs> Q was it Q? <laughs> oh, I think it was Q. I think it was Q. Yeah. Um, okay. I think we've talked a little bit about this, but Randy did send in another question. Randy did ask, "Are you a fan of the rock draw, or should they do a schoolyard pick?" Uh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. As a as a player, I would prefer the rock draw, just because I'm small. But um, as a viewer, I like the schoolyard pick. You get to see. Um, mm -hmm. a little bit more of like the conflict, who they don't want, who they want, who they perceive as a great player, you know? So, and it's so funny because when I won my first immunity, um, I was partners with Danny and nobody, that's when nobody wanted to be my partner. And Danny was just like, just come on, Lauren, come with me. And so he felt that we were going to be against each other. And so like, he could beat me. And so we got to the end and I still won. So, yes, <laughs> but I hated it. <laughs> I hated it, you know, in that moment. But, um, but I think a schoolyard pick is, is more fun. Yeah. Care what do you think? <laughs> I agree. I think it's fun to see like people's decision making, who they pick, why they're picking yeah. this person and everything. I think it is fun to watch that. You're showing yeah. your cards. You're showing yep. your cards. 
And Survivor is so much about luck anyway. Like, it's like what tribe you're on, you know, the weather, mm -hmm. the, the, right. the challenge, right. the puzzle that you get. It's all about luck already. Do we have to have some more luck in involved? Right. You know, it's just like. Too much. <laughs> I like too much. It's too much, I think. Right, right. Um, our last question that we have sent in beforehand is from Nate D. Nate asks, what should Tim have done to stay? This is a very big I, question. Touched his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> not throw out Hunter. Yeah. Not be, yeah. What, I don't think there was anything, though. Let me see you strong. Let me see you strong. <laughs> yeah. I think that there were a lot of... See, I think the big thing was don't go on the journey. That is, I think, going on the journey, mm. um, which... He says in his exit interview was already like predestined kind of where his, his group already like was like, they kind of said beforehand, if you know, who ever wins or whatever's going to happen, it's going to be this person or it went like went through the line. So he didn't really ever want to go on a journey, but I think it was like his turn. And so he kind of was like, his ego was like, okay, you go. And he went, but I really think right. that like, that's the downfall being a part of this six Alliance and him not really wanting to, and everybody else actually mm -hmm. wanting to be a part of the six Alliance so obviously yeah. he didn't know that going into it, but had he not gone on the journey, he would have never been a part of the six Alliance and maybe he would still be here. Um, right. But again, you, you can't know that hindsight's 2020, but I do think, I think this is another reason why journeys add a very interesting little, little twist, a little bit of zest into the game. Right. And I think even on that journey, he, he wanted, or he was hoping for, like maybe an advantage of some sort because they were going to tribal, right? Mm -hmm. So, but then he was like, I don't want to lose my vote or whatever. But mm -hmm. yeah, that kind of put him in a bind because it's like yep. he had to agree with it, you know? But just him just continuing to be like, uh, unsure. Like you gotta, you gotta act like you're at least, he didn't have any acting skills. And that yeah. was his issue. He was too, he was yeah. honest to the fault, you he know? Was. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Kara, what do you think he could have done? Anything? Anything? At that point, I don't think he could have done anything, but I think he, I think it would have been worth it for him to have leaned into the journey six in the beginning. Cause yeah. I feel like as soon yeah. as they all got together, it was kind of clear that they were serious about it. So at that mm -hmm. point, I feel like he should have been like, okay, I'll stick with this. Even if it's not what I really wanted, but I think it'll help me get far. But at that point, right. at his vote, I don't think there was anything he really could have done because Q already was sus of him. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. And Lauren, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. When you go on Survivor, you're going to want to keep as many options as you possibly can. So I don't right. understand why he didn't, like, you know, even if it's not a real thing, pretend it is. Right. Keep the option. Right. You don't ever want to say, like, no, you know, or make people mm -hmm. think that you're not with them, you know? Yep. So. That's why even Venus, when she was talking to Maria and she was like, what? So you're with Kevin? You know, like mm -hmm. you're not with me, basically. So, I mean, that can be a red flag to some people. Yep. And just like that, it got them out. you got to have as many alliances as possible. You know, and then maybe you think when you get to the end, you know, more people who like you, the more votes you may get. Yep. So, yeah. Absolutely. He, he was just trying to be loyal. <laughs> Which I commend. <laughs> Yeah. To you, Tim. <laughs> well, we have come to my favorite part of the episode, which has got to be our uh, awards season. Our, we have a couple of awards to give out. First one, well, it's not really an award, but it's like a, a mention. Kara's sweet thing of the episode. Kara, if, for the new listeners, why don't you tell mm -hmm. us what this is? Okay, so the sweet thing, I have another podcast with my cousin. At the end of each episode, we give our sweet thing of the week, which is like our favorite, like food, drink, anything like that. But for this, this is just something that I liked in the episode. And for this episode, we mentioned it earlier, but it's Kenzie's buff bow. I love that. Wow. <laughs> so that is my sweet thing of this episode. <laughs> Yeah. So good. That's such a good one. So cute. Lauren, do you have a sweet thing of the episode? Um, you know what? It goes to Jeff and them for that idol. I mean, that immunity necklace. That thing was beautiful. Yeah. 
Okay, I was kind of jealous. Got the red beads and the lizards on there. Like it just looked like a true piece of jewelry. It was gorgeous. So that would be my sweet thing. That's a good one. I think that's such a good one. <laughs> such a good one. And let me just say that idol on the internet is polarizing. Some people hate it and some people what? love it. <laughs> No, I posted on my story when I saw a photo of it. I was like, I love this. It's so gorgeous. I got like four or five messages from people going like, oh, it looks like a kid made that. I'm like, what? <laughs> I love it. I love it. I think it's so it's pretty. So nice. Yeah. So, so, okay, <laughs> well, that means everyone else is wrong. If all three of us agree, that means the rest of the world is incorrect. And we're wrong. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, haters. Uh, haters. Haters. I loved it. <laughs> I love when they do anything different. I love when they, it's like they spice it up. It's not the same thing. It's, you know, something completely out of left field. And I love when they do that. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Now our next award, as always, finishing up the episode is our social butterfly of the episode. If you, if you are new here, the social butterfly is the word we give out to the person that we felt played the best socially this episode. Um, you can take some other episodes into account, but really we're thinking about just this one episode. I will start that. I think for this episode for me, Charlie is going to win the social butterfly for me. Reasoning, obviously, we don't see him like as overtly social as some other people. But the way that this man keeps maneuvering away from the votes when he yeah. is the clear vote, I think shows that he has a very strong social sense. People want to protect him. People want to make sure he's in the game. Maybe it's because he's strategic. Maybe because it's something else. But I think that that shows he is very good socially. Uh, and he is winning my social butterfly for the episode. Lauren, do you know who you want to do uh, for your social butterfly? I like Charlie, but I I think I'm going to go ahead and give it to Tiff. And um, the reason why is because she's kind of just staying under the radar. You know, nobody's saying her name either. And I mean, she has this idol. It's secret. She doesn't have to use it. She doesn't have to worry about it. Her name has never come up. So I give I give it to her this episode. Mm. Great one. Kara, what about you? I'm I'm going to go with Kenzie mainly because of the whole of this the whole thing with her and Ben. I feel like that, yeah. that really stuck out to me and I think that was a big a big moment. Um right. so I'm definitely giving it to Kenzie for this episode. <laughs> I love it. We all have it. It's very rare that we all have a different person. I love that. Yeah. Awards, awards galore here over at Survivor Social. <laughs> I love it. Well, that is everything. I want to thank everyone for tuning in, but especially Lauren, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to talk about this episode, episode several with us tonight. Um, it's so much fun to talk to players just to get, you know, their thoughts on this season um, and all that good stuff. So um, why don't you tell, is there anything new going on in your life, anywhere people can find you, uh, anything you want to share just uh, in your own personal, personal life? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know what, just, you can find me on Instagram. I, I, told myself I was going to take a break from it <laughs> just just to kind of step away <laughs> but you gotta it's, that. I know I know but it's still up it's still running so at the Lauren Ash or the Lauren Hart um on Instagram and that's pretty much where I am so I don't I don't do too much of the Twitter or X or whatever it's called <laughs> I try to stay away but on Instagram you can follow me there the Lauren Hart incredible Kara, as always, where can people find you? On Instagram at XOX underscore Kara or at Sweet Thanks Podcast. And that's on when? Thursdays as oh, well? Yes. New episodes on Thursdays. You can listen anywhere. Podcasts are heard. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere. <laughs> Thursdays are the day that you set aside and just listen to Kara all day. You listen to Sweet Thing and then you come back over here. I do this Survivor Social. That's your Kara day. day for Kara fans. <laughs> Big day for Kara fans everywhere. As a quick reminder for what we've got coming up on the Survivor Now Network, as always, Stock Watch is coming up on Friday and Got Something For You is on Saturday. So please tune in to both of those incredible panelists, incredible people. You might even have some guests on there this week. So definitely make sure to take a look. Uh, and as always, remember to like and subscribe to Survivor Now on YouTube and Spotify. And uh, we will see you next week. We've got some really fun things coming up, but love you guys. And as always, stay social. Thank you guys so much.